everyone, Alicia McGill here with Math Labs. Today we're looking at Content Standard 6.ns.1 of the 6th grade standards, which involves dividing fractions. This corresponds with Lab 3.2 of our Math Labs, which everyone should have their Math Labs open to Section 3.2. Let's read the objective together. I can use a visual model or a picture to find quotients involving fractions. So I want everyone to underline that vocabulary word quotients. You should remember that from yesterday. Um, yesterday in Lab 3.1, we looked at a whole number divided by fraction, which really you worked a lot in fifth grade um, with, with that type of problem. Uh, for example, 3 divided by 1 third. And, and you saw that the quotient was 9 after drawing a visual model. And then hopefully you were able to come up with a shortcut for an algorithm. And um, so many of you are wondering, does that procedure work? for maybe a fraction involving a numerator other than one. And um, if that's your question, we're going to test out and maybe you have a hypothesis. You say, yes, it will continue to work. My algorithm will work. And maybe you say, no, it doesn't work um, unless this number is a one. And then you can flip and multiply. So we're going to see. Um, you're going to draw models today, of course. You're going to put your answers, which are your quotients and your problems in your table, and analyze your data, and then hopefully come to a conclusion and report your findings. So I kind of like to think of it as like a, a mathematical method, kind of like the scientific method. It's kind of like my twist on it for math labs. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to model how to divide four, okay, divided by two fifths. So we're going to find the quotient. Again, we're thinking about, just like yesterday, the meaning, how many two fifths are in four, okay? So. You probably guessed it. We start by drawing four holes, okay? If you remember, we did the same thing yesterday. So I'm just going to draw four holes. And for our purposes of math labs, I made the numbers um, pretty easy for you to draw. So I don't think I have a dividend greater than, you know, like seven. So you don't have to draw, you know, 84 boxes and see how many hundredths go into it, okay? We'll save our procedure for that. All right, so we have two fifths, so our denominator is five, so we're going to divide this into fifths. So we need one, two, three, four lines to make fifths. So these are all a fifth, and I'm just going to label the first one, all right, just for time's sake. But again, one, two, three, four lines makes five parts, so there's our fifths. We're going to do the same thing in all four holes, okay? All right, once you have that, I'm going to, ta-da, whip out my purple. And we're going to circle how many groups of two-fifths are in four. Remember, that's one way to think about it, because it doesn't really make sense for us to divide four into, um, you know, two-fifths groups and see how many are in each. So although we can look at division in two ways, like we learned yesterday, we're going to stick with this model of how many two-fifths are in four, okay? So we have, here's a group of two-fifths, would you agree? One-fifth and one-fifth, so that's a group of two-fifths. Here's another group of two-fifths. I have this left over, but hopefully I can uh, marry that with someone so this one-fifth isn't lonely. So we have another two-fifths, another two-fifths, another two-fifths. And I'm just going to circle these. And then I'm going to see if I can, on the side here, marry up you to our two-fifths. Because remember, this is also a fit here. All right, I just didn't label it. And then another group of two-fifths. So it goes in evenly, okay? So we have a whole number for our quotient. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So basically, two-fifths goes into four 10 times. And we talked about yesterday um, why this number is larger and why that makes sense because this is a fraction here and, and it's a small number and it goes into four um, many times, okay? In this case, 10 times. And yesterday we learned how we could check our quotient to make sure that our solution here, our answer, is correct. Who remembers that method to check? Crickets. No, I mean, literally, I hear crickets, I'm in the garage. But um, if you forgot, here's the method. You were to use multiplication. Multiplication, remember, division and multiplication are inverses. So just as in 12 divided by 4 equals 3, you could check that by multiplying 3 times 4 and you should equal 12, right? So 10 times 2 fifths, okay, so 10 groups of 2 fifths, each of these 2 fifths, should equal 4 wholes. So let's just do the multiplication here, 10 times 2 fifths. All right, we're going to multiply straight across. Remember to put your whole numbers over 1, and we get 20 fifths. 
All right, we know that 20 fifths is improper, and this is a whole number here, 20 divided by 5 is 4, and so it does check, so yay, it checks. And uh, right now, what I'd like for you to do, um, of course, I, if you have any questions, now's the time, but I'm going to have you do a model on your whiteboards, and then I'm going to have you break off, and you can go ahead and start Math Lab 3.2 with your partner, and then at the end, we'll brief and um, hopefully you can report your findings and we'll have a class discussion about them. Okay, but right now, just kind of want to go through that process with you as you get used to doing the math labs every day. Let's have you do this problem on your whiteboards. It is three divided by three fourths. Okay, so let's just think about what that means first. Um, how many groups of three fourths go into three? Right now, I want you to go ahead and draw your model and tell me what your quotient is by circling it and then I'm going to have you raise your boards once I call the color um, of your board. So if you have a pink board and um, about a fifth if you do because there's five colors out there then um, you're going to raise, raise your pink board and so on and so forth. Okay. okay, so after checking this should be your solution. We should have three holes. All right, so there's one, two, and three. And we're seeing how many three-fourths, so we want to look at fourths, because we want to be able to circle fourths, right? Three-fourths. So we need fourths. So to do that, you know, you always divide in half, and then in half again, and that makes your fourths. Or you could do the one, two, three lines to make four parts method. All right, so we're seeing how many three-fourths go into three. I'm going to use green this time. Remember, these are all fourths, right? So how many three-fourths? Well, here's a group of one, two, three-fourths. So that so far goes in one time, goes in another time here, goes in a third time here, and look at that, it goes in evenly. And so we have a quotient of one, two, three, four. And I saw that everyone had that on their whiteboards, which makes me super excited. And now I hope that um, many of you will have the opportunity to test your hypothesis and see if your theory of dividing fractions with a numerator other than one um, turns out to be the same algorithm as dividing with a numerator of one. Um, and additionally, the last thing that I want to note is on your lab, if it says to check, make sure you do the check, which we went over using multiplication, like four times three-fourths should equal three. All right, thanks so much for watching. This has been Lab 3.2 of 6.ns.1. Tomorrow, we're gonna look at a fraction that goes into a whole number, but there's a remainder. And then we're gonna look at a fraction divided by a fraction. So both the divisor and the dividend will both be fractions, and we'll look at that model and um, test that out as well. Thanks for watching.